And the Game Award goes to Final Fantasy XIV. And the Game Award goes to Final Fantasy XIV for the second time tonight. Thank you, Jeff. On behalf of the Final Fantasy XVI team, our latest trailer, Revenge. That's all you care about. Good God. Perhaps a beast's skin would suit you better. Welcome to another video, in which I want to activate a question I was wondering about for quite a while now and maybe open up a discussion for the comment section or Discord servers or wherever you might be talking about it. Or already did that before the video. Yes, some of you might not know this, but Naoki Yoshida, the producer and director of Final Fantasy XIV, has also been turned into the producer of Final Fantasy XVI. So of course, this responsibility will lead to a reduction of working hours for the game that this man turned into the big success Square Enix had always hoped for back in 2013. However, what seemed to not have caused a huge amount of drop dates or missed out scheduling for the plan to release content for Final Fantasy XIV, especially when looking at the launch and release of Endwalker. But there have to be shortcomings somewhere, right? I mean, when we're being honest, one person alone can't create the game by themselves, so it is thanks to Yoshida's team that Endwalker was indeed the expansion people have hoped for, and it was a great success along the line. And I absolutely agree, when looking at the game for what it is and always had been, there is a straight line that it treads and walks alongside other games on the market with sometimes more and sometimes less popularity, but still a constant success on the horizon that every MMO is striving for. Yet Yoshida is still being perceived as the driving force behind the whole team, who controls and regulates most of the developers' decisions, but I do think this is kinda mystifying the actual truth that plays into Square Enix's hands perfectly, because for what we learned about the core task of Yoshida or his approach to tackle difficulties is exactly the opposite of what the game's path right now is leading. They're ultimately playing it safe in every possible way, which is absolutely fine, but playing it safe is the easy way, and as the past has proven, even in the context of Eorzea, sometimes you need to take risks to achieve greatness. And we all know that this was the exact task Yoshida had to accomplish with A Realm Reborn. And he did. Of course, the game is not anywhere close to what it was in 1.0. Otherwise, it would not have won the best ongoing game or best community support awards, right? But on the other hand, it isn't perfect either, and there is reasonable criticism for certain aspects of the game or how the game is evolving. And while these issues have been solved or made worse in one or the other way, I feel like the man for bold decisions is not fully active on this spot, where some action might be required, because he understandably is busy with producing the next big success in the mainline series of Final Fantasy. But 14 needs this man back. The exact person that smiled at World of Warcraft, once for being the shining star on the MMORPG horizon, looking up to its glory and being inspired by it. Another time for making the adaptation even better than the original, while Blizzard pushed their game into the wall. However, the scales have turned, and not that Dragonflight will forever take the crown back, but Blizzard is trying to make things better, taking risks to improve even against their 15 year old game philosophy. Yes, I can easily just stick to PvP for PvP's sake. No world quests, no more, no nothing needed, except some gold for a chance or stuff like that. I know, the haters gonna hate, but the changes to gear currency, especially on the PvP department they made in Shadowlands, combined with the limited gearing system that keeps itself to its own categories, that you can see in Dragonflight now, are amazing changes, and something that heavily differs from the usual grind fest we face for 15 years now. So at least for the state of the game, I can focus myself only on PvP and not do anything else because I don't want to. 14, however, kinda gives me the exact opposite vibe sometimes. There's so much content that I want to play, but no motivating reason to do so. PvP is great, but no achievements, no gear, no mounts are waiting for the player. Which is definitely a core principle of content. Playing for content's sake alone is the same dead end like forcing the player to participate to reach certain checks and goals, even though they actually want to play other stuff. Yes, this might not be a gushing wound yet, but as long as you need to scratch it over and over again, it will bother you until you do something against it. 
So Final Fantasy XIV is not in danger, but it could be if nobody steps in to work on its problems. And no, I'm not talking about all the great content this game offers for many people in so many different variants. I'm talking about taking risks to evolve the game further in those areas where it lacks set or unset content. Yes, I know some very defensive 14 players hate change, and I might actually be in the minority wanting the next gen version of Final Fantasy XIV. But on the other hand, exactly because I don't want this game to stagnate and stick to its solid performance on the market, but instead taking that amazing core foundation, these brilliant ideas of how to make a game work, as an MMO and an RPG together, building the ultimate MMORPG for the next year to come. It is possible, but I feel like only Naoki Yoshida has the right mindset, power and authority to achieve that. Which leads us back to the topic. How much of a genius this man can be and how much he might be sacrificing his own time and personal life for these two games at the moment, his heart is split, his passion is torn and it might still lead to some of the best games in their category. And I truly hope for Final Fantasy XVI to be a great main series title again, as I grew up with these games and they did so my passion for video games. But I do think that this approach in duality, which is half-hearted by the fact of the matter, will push one of these games aside, as long as the focus lies within the other. But this actually leads us to very positive resolution this time. Final Fantasy XIV needs an update. It's a fact that a game that persists for nearly 10 years on an ever-changing market has to evolve. And yes, evolving doesn't imply changing the foundation, but taking all the good things to the next level. Where I do believe, without any disregard to the amazing team working on this game besides Yoshida, this guy is the only one with the right tools, connections and range to make it happen. But he needs to commit his all to that cause, like he did all the years before, especially when the game faced its worst moments. Which means Final Fantasy XVI will be a main series title and even though Square Enix will apply their usual DLC bullshit and such, it is meant to be played through and then moved on, as even the most open ends on these games tend to have a conclusion in them. And this is not like the go play some other games until we have new content for you. When this game drops in June, Yoshida will retire or return to 14. And from the fact that this man's eye emanate the hunger for more, I would bet for a glorious comeback to kick 14 into the next stage that this game deserves for a long time. I mean, what better moment could someone choose to dare some risks and innovations than a 10 year anniversary? So I'm excited for the next year and hope for Yoshida to return with all of his passion and love to kick off 10.0 with a bang. Again. Let me know what you think about the inner conflict of a games developer and producer in the comment section. And until next time, keep loving Final Fantasy. Thank you.